Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're going to talk about fiscal calendars. And specifically, we're going to talk about the 53-week calendar. All right. Uh, let's start off with a, with a simple use case, regular calendar, uh, which starts January 1st and ends December 31st. All right. I have some uh, sales data here, and I've... Uh, I've built a simple visual uh, where I have sales per year and I've built um, some uh, straightforward year-to-date revenue calculation, which is basically using the total year-to-date function uh, and calculating the sales over time and the prior year calculation, which is uh, using the same period last year. This is the you know standard basic formula you would use. Right, and uh, just to validate, uh, I'll expand out 2018. Um, so you see, uh, uh, as my uh, months go, uh, as I go through each month, January uh, is uh, uh, 15 million, and then uh, I go to February, it sums it up, my year to date, uh, and March, and so forth. And I look, if I look at uh, 2017 data. Uh, if you look at January, it's uh, 12 million, and February it is 29 million. And if I scroll down to 2018, my prior year is 12 million, 29 million for January and February. February. So, looks like that calculation is working fine. Now, what happens if my fiscal year uh, is different from the regular calendar? Let's say my fiscal year uh, starts. July 1st and ends June 30th. Now to handle this, uh, the inbuilt total year-to-date function has um, has uh, certain parameters we can pass to handle this scenario, which is uh, pretty straightforward. So I go to my year-to-date calculation. So total year-to-date uh, takes two uh, parameters uh, which are required, and then there are a couple more parameters which are optional. If I start typing, you'll see that uh, here, this filter parameter, this is optional. Um, so in my case, since I want to do my fiscal calendar is different, what I'll do is I will pass, um, basically pass a filter which says select all the date. So remove, uh, what that means is remove any filter that's on the date table and um, select all the dates. And then, uh, Give the last date of your fiscal calendar. Um, the it should be month slash date. So six in my scenario, let's say uh, June thirtieth uh, is the last date of my fiscal calendar. I pass in six thirty. Click enter. Now, the, now that should take care of this scenario. Now, if you look at the, uh, look at the table here, you'll see that. Uh, through June, I'm uh, year to date is summing uh, my prior months, and starting July is a new fiscal calendar. So it it's uh, the first month there is no sum, and then the second month it is um, summing July and August, and it goes on. Uh, and similarly, uh, prior year to date works as well. So uh, this scenario is pretty straightforward. Now, what happens if um, I, I have a 53-week calendar or some other obscure calendar where my um, month or my fiscal year doesn't start on the first day of the month and um, doesn't end on the like the uh, end on a particular date each year. Uh, my fiscal um, year could start on a different date or end on a different date, and 53-week uh, calendar calendar is a perfect example of that. Uh, for example, I, I, I pulled in a fiscal 53-week uh, calendar here into my uh, date table, um, and let me let me maybe filter it down to 2019 to show you what I mean. So if you see fiscal year 2019 um, starts on December 31st of 2018, right? Uh, and the first month uh, January, if I filter down to just January. Um, you see that January ends on the 27th of 2019. And then of course, February Feb will start on the 28th. So 
uh, obviously this doesn't follow your regular calendar it's completely different so the the, the, the functions that come in built with dax like totally year to date same period last year those will not work so we'll have to um, create some uh, our own our own dax basically to address the scenario right so let's see how we can do this Uh, before actually st I start writing the DAX, let me let's go back to the date table and uh, let me talk through these fields here, right? So the the first column is just the date, and then we have the fiscal year. This is the fiscal period, and uh, fiscal period year is basically concatenation of year and period. And then the, uh, the the key thing here to note is the fiscal period number. Now this defines uh, this. Uh, I'll be using this to. Uh, navigate up and down the date table right so this is basically uh, if I take the filter out clear all the filters um, this is the number 1 to 12 so this identifies the 12 periods uh, in our fiscal calendar right um, so I'm going to use that to kind of uh, help me navigate uh, up and down the calendar I'm going to fiscal period number and fiscal year okay uh, now let's start building uh, uh, a calculation, the uh, year-to-date uh, calculation. So I'm going to create a new measure, and let me call this um, 53 week fiscal uh, year-to-date revenue. All right, and first I'm going to start by creating some variables. Okay, so the first one is I want to know where what my current year is, right? Uh, so the way to do that is there is a function called selected value, and I'm going to um, look for the current fiscal year that we are working with. Okay, uh, so the next one I want is the current period number. Now, like I just mentioned, when we looked at the date table, these are the two fields that I am um, going to use um, to build my formula. So I'm going to look for fiscal period number. Okay. So what this does is, let's say if I'm uh, if I am in uh, January of 2018, um, it'll give me the year as 2018 and whatever period that particular date is on. Okay. Now, the next thing I need to do is write the actual um, tax, right? Once we have these two, um, I'm going to say return. Now, I'm assuming you are familiar uh, with a little bit of DAX, um, uh, some basic amount of DAX, so calculate function and all and, thing, and filter and things along those lines. Okay. Um, so, calculate. What am I calculating? I'm calculating the sales. And the second parameter that calculate function takes is filter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say filter all of date. So remove any filters that on the date table and apply this specific filter that I want on the date table. I want fiscal year to be equal to current year and uh, oh sorry not and it's ampersand ampersand um, period number should be equal to current period number so what this is doing is if if i'm looking uh, at data let's say i'm looking at sales for june or uh, the june period right or the sixth period um, then well, then if I have to do year to date, I have to sum up the data for period one through six. So what this is doing is uh, it's removing the filter that's on the date. So it's removing the uh, fact that I'm looking at the data for the sixth period and saying remove that filter and instead add the add a filter which is everything in the current uh, year and uh, the fiscal period is uh, this should be um, 
less than or equal to the current period. So if my anything uh, where my period number is one through six, sum it up, right? So that's what this formula is doing. Okay, let's hit go. Okay, now let me um, redo these visuals. Let me remove this because we need uh, fiscal um, period in our uh, visual. So I'm going to select fiscal uh, period here. Let me just select this so we have both. And uh, you know what? Let me just, so it's easier to navigate up and down the hierarchy. Let me select fiscal year, fiscal period, and I'm going to put this in the rows and 53 week value. Okay. Let me expand this out. And last thing, I want to format this fiscal 53 week value. Let me make that okay so now it is um, th this is how you would uh, calculate year to date now as you see January uh, is is the first period uh, sales number and then you see it's uh, slowly increasing over time through December and then the following year again January it uh, starts at the small number and then sums it up so your year, year to date number is uh, being calculated now this is year to date what about prior year to date right there is uh, I cannot use same period last year because um, uh, the function does not work because our date is not calendar dates or fiscal year is not uh, fiscal um, calendar doesn't match the regular calendar so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ca copy this um, calculation that we did and I'm going to create a new one new measure and just for ease what I'm going to this I'm going to call this prior year to date so what, what we want to do here is, you know, it's pretty simple. So I still want to calculate sales, but this time I want to go one, because I want to go prior year, I want to go one year before, and the period number will remain the same because every year it's one to 12, the same periods, it starts from one and 12th period and again starts. So if I'm looking at the first six periods of the current year, I want to uh, look at prior year to date for the same first six periods. So all I have to do is go back one year. So that's what this function, um, this, uh, this negative one would do. Okay, so save that. And then again, I'm gonna format this uh, measure. Make that a currency again. Okay, and bring this into our visual. All right, so there you go. So you see the prior year, so 20, um, this is uh, January of 2012, and then you see the prior year calculation, this matches to this, uh, and February matches February, and so forth. So uh, this is how you would navigate your, um, when you're, when you're, uh, when you're using 53 week uh, calendar. Uh, similarly, you could do uh, same month uh, prior year and uh, uh, same quarter and so forth. You basically have to manipulate uh, these two fields where you want to go back and forth, up and down the your uh, date table. Hope this video was helpful. Um, if you've got any comments, leave them below. If not, thanks for watching and have a nice day.